So we're back out doing another landscape photography guide. I'm up in the Lake District today, so we're going to show what we learned in the last video and how to put it into action. So what we're going to do is make our way up onto one of these hills. It should get a view over to Connor Snowman and Dal Craig looking over Tarver Common. So I think today is mainly going to be about composition and scouting out locations. Because I'm going to point out a few things along the way of things that could work for photos. Um, like there's a few streams and there might be some, um, I don't know, rocks and bracken. Depends on what you look for. The good thing about landscape photography is that you, there isn't any rules really. You can just shoot what you want. And the stuff that you like, I might not like. And what I shoot, you might not like. But it doesn't really matter. You shoot what you want. So we'll get moving and see what we can find. So there's a stream that runs all the way up to the tarn, goes around this corner and the tarn's back there. And there's these stepping stones that go across it. So you, you could do a composition there, maybe with that in the foreground and get this fell in the background. One thing I'd watch out for if you're doing this kind of thing is be good to not get footsteps on these rocks because that could spoil the image um, that's not really my scene though so I'm not going to do that so we've made it up above the town now and you're getting the views over to Dow Crag here and Connor Snowman and down onto the water and I'm not massively keen on this composition here just because of how like, compact everything is. I find that the higher that you climb and the more you look down onto it, this will stretch out. So I'm gonna climb up onto this one. There's a trek there, so it's just gonna be like another five minute walk up there maybe. And then it should make the tarn look bigger. And I think it'll just work better. And then on the way up, I spotted this tree and it's not really working for me today because the sun is behind it and it's all in shadow. But if you came up here early morning, you could get this track. You can sort of see the shadow of it there leading up to it with that tree and you could get a nice sky behind it. So we might come back to that one day. I'm going the wrong way, but we'll go up here first. See, this is what I was talking about with that tree. Because that sun is on this side, you're getting all the detail in the tree now. Maybe we can come back down that way and look with the tree, with the tan. It feels like this could be a good place to get the photo from here, because you see both of the edges of the water. You're getting a few reflections here. You can see the mountains, you get more of the clouds and it sort of points in the direction of the mountains, sort of like an arrowhead. But the thing you've got to watch out for is the shadows. So maybe if we can hide underneath the rocks, like in the shadow here, we won't cast a shadow that way. Oh, it'd be easier to go down here. Let's go and sit behind this rock. Let's see if it works. So there's my shadow. Yeah, you can see my head because I'm still quite high, but we can make this work. So I'm finding that if I lay really back like this, you can't even see my head anymore. So what we're going to do is like we said in the last, like we said in the last video, we're going to get the tripod out. I might use my big tripod just because it's going to be easier to set up here because it's like not really level ground, and my old one's a bit awkward to set up. But we'll get it set up and then run through the settings. So I've got it all set up now, and 
The reason I've used my other tripod is just because it's sort of an awkward place to set up and you can open the legs up wider with this one. So I've got this one up, up here. The other one is over here just because this is the only hard ground. Then the other one is on a rock down there. And try and show you the composition. So if you stick it onto the live view, it's kind of difficult to show you it on the back of the screen, but it's basically a composition like this. And it means that you get Dell Crag, Connor Snowman, I think that one's Weatherham, and you get this water pointing towards Weatherham, which is quite nice. I like being able to see the edge of the water as well. Like you can't see it here, but there's trees there, so that's still quite interesting. And I'm not a big fan of it, but there's a lot of people down here. We can just wait until they're gone if we really wanted to. And then with the foreground, I found that this shadow stuck into the frame too much. The one that I've got is sort of similar to that, but if you make it any wider, it's just a little bit distracting in this bottom corner. So I've just zoomed in a little bit more. And then I quite like how this shadow is a similar shape to this water. You could crop it out altogether and go for something like that, but then the sky is a bit boring. So I think this works better. Like in the last video, we've put the ISO on 100. We've gone for F11 because we want it to be in focus front to back and then we've just chosen a shutter speed that fits and then I tend to use a two second timer it's going to be important today as well because like we mentioned before with that shadow I'm going to have to press the shutter and then lay down so that two seconds will give me time to do that so we'll take this one And then that should mean we're not in the photo. So if you look down here, yeah, it's just a mound. I guess you could involve yourself and get like a bit of a selfie, but it would just be my head there. and I don't think that would look very good. Because of the shape of that shadow, it looks a bit like a nipple on the top of the hill. Another setting that I didn't mention in the last video is RAW or JPEG. I always shoot in RAW with my other camera. But if you don't have access to editing software, um, it's not much use because you won't have access to your photos. So JPEG is sort of the camera editing your photos for you. And you get a bit of a smaller file, but the picture's ready to go. And RAW is just a RAW unedited file. And you've got more freedom afterwards to edit your pictures because nothing's compressed down. So it is another thing to learn. So if you're getting started, maybe JPEG is a good way to go. But if you want to get more into it, I'd recommend looking into shooting RAW and then using software like Lightroom to edit your photos. Maybe we could do that. Let's get a picture in RAW as well. So what I'm gonna do is take one picture in RAW and one in JPEG. I'm gonna try and do them as quickly together as possible, just so the clouds are in the same place, shadows are in the same place and that. So this is exactly the same settings and exactly the same technique. <laughs> Not sure if that class is a technique laying down, but on the back of the camera, they look pretty much the same. Um, it should do though, because it's the same settings. The RAWs tend to look a bit flatter though, because they haven't had any like sharpness added or any contrast added. So they tend to look a bit flatter, but we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with my edit against the JPEG edit. So I think we've got enough from this spot. We'll head up to the top and see what we can see there. I've made it up onto the top now, and I think I actually preferred it from where we were before. Just that the foreground isn't as good here. It's all just like dead bracken at the moment. And it's a bit more difficult to hide your shadow because when you're here, I guess you could hide behind these ones and it's all lower down. But I just don't like this frame. 
The bit that I like about it here is these mountains, mainly Dow Crag and Coniston. And that would mean I'd have to do a frame sort of like this with all this ground down here. And that's just a bit boring. There's not a lot going on. So I think it is a good idea to have a plan of what you actually want and then be willing to change it. I was planning on coming to the tops and looking down, but it just doesn't work as well. So I also had a question about if there's any guidelines or rules, mainly the, the third rule. Um, I do sometimes use it, but it's more often than not, it's by chance. I don't intentionally try and stick it on the third lines. It's basically, if you split your uh, composition up with two lines here, I'll put it on the screen actually. Um, they say that you should put your interesting bits here, 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 or here, where the, the lines cross over. Um, it's just sort of, if you put everything in the middle, people look in the middle and nowhere else. But if you put it like on those lines, I guess you look around the frame more. Sometimes that works. Other times it doesn't fit those. I wouldn't really try and stick to any rules or do stuff just because other people do it. Just try and find the stuff that you are interested in and then you'll be able to find compositions there. Like I find it easy in this kind of situation where I'm up high and looking down because this is what I'm interested in. But I sometimes get messages off people saying, why didn't you get a picture of such and such behind you? Like a little pattern of light on the rocks or that kind of thing. And I personally don't really care about that kind of thing. I'm not really into the abstract stuff, but that doesn't mean it's not a good thing to do. If you're into that, then do that. Uh, it's just finding what you like and then you'll find it a lot easier because the compositions will come naturally to you. So I hope you found that helpful. Do you want an editing video comparing those two JPEG and RAW files? That could be a good one to do because you've seen the behind the scenes now as well. Let me know down in the comments. If you want to help support the channel, I've got prints and greetings cards starting from £2.50 over on adamcapper.co.uk or if you hit the like button and subscribe and share the videos around, that helps a lot as well. Let me know what you want to see and I'll see you next time.